Good evening, ladies and gents. I guess it'll be morning by the time this video is, gets released. Anyways, welcome to another video brought to you by Total Control Traders. So, today is a very important day in the market. And let's get right into it. Why do I say today is most a very important day in the market? Let's take, let's take a look at the charts. Uh, quite a few things to note. So, in today's video, we're going to be doing a market deep dive. It's been a long time since we did a deep dive, but I am seeing signs that justifies a deep dive from here. So let's take a look. Daily doesn't look anything significant. It is still a daily bear flag formation. We did close right on that daily eight, right in that short term resistance area in between 44.26 and 44.38.6. And it's decreasing bull volume. So what does this present us? Now let's take a look at the already. Already is where it's at for today. So today we see a hold coming back to back test this previous lower trend line. Okay, another touch, a third touch on this de descending wedge. Long term uptrend, or sorry, long term upper trend line. One, two, another one over here. Three, four, five rejections from that upper trend line. Today we saw huge break on it okay uh, towards the end of the day that last hour of the day on the break was huge follow through this is very key on spx what i was looking at intraday there was a lot of messages shared throughout the day let's just take a quick quick look at that actually so in the day this is the key one that i wanted to share oh i guess you guys can't see that there we go So intraday, I was looking at behavior change out there in the market, dips being bought, bull volume coming in, first V shape in a long time. And the one that I was referring to was on the shorter time frame. It was right here as well as right here. So on the five minute, you can see this is a complete V shape. This is also a V shape. There's another couple over here and this one as well. So that is very notable. Uh, v shape being bought, and if we get that reversal candle today, there was a lot of reversal candle that was forming early in the day. Hammers, shoot, uh, not shooting stars, hammers, spinning bottom, whichever one you're looking at, depending on the chart you're looking at, uh, there are still some that's weak, specific, elucid. We could see SPXL UTL upper trend line break plus high of day close, so that was shared at 116. And then on the on the upper trend line break, it was five minutes later, 121. And a couple messages shared was three fake outs before. So make sure to that this is a full breakout. So there were three fake outs before with upper wick, depending on how you draw the chart, you know. Uh, but today's chart was very obvious that on this pullback, I was looking for a break of that upper trend line. Because when we look at this pullback, that got V-shaped, that last last V-shaped one, this bounced exactly, what is it, point, so point three, 0 0.3 points off from that 0.5. Just a tad bit lower. But on the chart, look at this. Perfect bounce from that 0.5. And this is why I was thinking, okay, we're going to get that UTL break. I entered a uh, spy call for next week over here right over here and looking at this you know a third touch slight rejection immediately immediately bought up and on the break this was i thought there's volume that came in it's like a two minutes yeah volume came in on the on the break of this upper trend line right here this volume very notable we wanted to see that there's no bear volume that came in so regardless you know i'm uh, not going to get into the detail detail of what's going on but this is why you can expect from our chat room live updates as things happen spiking bull volume and for our higher low bigger and bigger lower wicks and that's right here and uh let's see what else we got more v shapes high bull volume okay so this is the end of day message that I shared with the group. Uh, SPX highest bull volume on the weekly ever. If you if we were to look at this chart, so on, if we were to look at, sorry, let me move this back here. All right, so if we were to look at SPX weekly chart, look at that bull volume. Look at that volume, doesn't matter, bull, vo bull volume or, or bear volume, okay? How, look how high that is. 
Now you go forward, there is nothing, nothing nearly as high as that. So high volatility, high volume. Now let's take a look at monthly as well. Monthly highest bear volume ever. Now let's, let's compare that. What does that mean? So every time that we have seen a bottoming process, there was a spike in bull vo bear volume over here, a slight, a little bit further down before it actually come, came back up. Now there's highest bear volume as well. This was the bottom that marked the bottom highest bear volume ever marked the bottom as well. And then as well over here, another highest bear volume ever marked the bottom. This one pandemic wasn't the highest bear volume, but it was very, very notable on the monthly chart. So that's a good sign for the bulls, a bad sign for the bears. I mean, you, you've had a lot, the bears had a lot of profits already. Right. So with this, you know, what we're looking at now is a more likely scenario of bottoming process being completed here. Of course, we're going to need that confirmation going into next week. Ideally, see the follow through immediately on Monday and then closing that week above. First of all, Monday close over that day eight and then weekly. Ideally, let's see. Let's see a touch of that weekly eight. Now, what this could mean from here, if this is a bottoming process, looking at the longer term, this could be just a dragged out. You know, we, we will be looking at potentially new highs, but I will be looking at a back test of this key trend line from before. Where we've seen multiple bounces. Uh, first, let's see, one, two, three, four. This blue trend line had four. So first we'll be looking at that blue trend line, lining up with that weekly eight, right around here, four, fi four five, five, four. Now with the bounce Monday, if we get continuation, there are some key zones to break, of course, on the shorter time frame. First one is gonna be around that 44.30, right around where we closed. We're gonna to need to see that break above it. We did break over this previous resistance, but there's this whole area is a zone. So, and then this area is now probably insignificant, but following that is gonna be this area, next key area to break. So there's lots of work for the bulls to complete, to, to, to do as well. But from here, what we're looking at is potential reversal. Now let's take a look at the reason why I wanted to do a deep dive today. Uh, interestingly, US dollars, look at where we are. This is a long, long term trend line, okay? Long, long term trend line. And maybe we'll do this as money line, but let's, let's, uh, let's do must hold. So multiple bounces, multiple bounces again, multiple bounces again. And then from here, we saw a loss of an immediate back test, actually, sorry, immediate back test over here and then actual back test before breaking down. So this is US dollars, DXY, and now look where we are again. So we're coming back, you know, touched it, reject, came back down and then touching it again today. Now, if we're to reject into Monday, this is gonna be a very significant bear divergence on the US dollars. Today we did get that spinning top candle, new highs. Let's see if we get follow through on Monday, going into Monday, we're gonna need to see that bear come in on US dollars. So that's first decent signal for uh, well, a second, I guess, on top of the market. You know, this is a second decent signal for bottoming process being complete. Third, let's take a look at US 10 years. US 10 year head and shoulder that we had anticipated is potentially working out. We did close at the new low, uh, breaking under yesterday's low. So this is very significant. Again, Monday, if we were to get follow through the neckline, the key to break is right over here. So this is what I will be looking at, very similar pattern. Let's see if we get that follow through this time. On the weekly, let's see if there's a bear divergence. So on the weekly, there's no bear divergence. On the monthly, there's nothing significant either. So even if we were to break down, I wouldn't be looking for too, too much follow through. Ideally, you know, if you were looking to play bonds, this money line is that area of entry. One, two, three, four bounces from that money line already. So with that being said, US, US 10 years, again, is a very ideal first sign of reversal for the market. So that's third confirmed. Well, not confirmed. We're gonna need Monday to confirm. Fourth is VIX. So VIX, the pattern that we were looking at before, this has repeated. Okay, this has repeated, but so far there is no follow through. So that's a good sign for the market bulls. We are, we were looking at this bull break 
and we got that bull break, we played that bull break. We're looking at this back test of the upper trend line of previous wedge. We got that back back test a little bit more dragged out, but we got the back test. And then we were looking at new highs. That would be a red flag and potentially going into an actual market crash. But what we saw here is new highs, huge upper wick coming back down. So that's a good sign for the market bulls. And then from here, we saw a daily bull flag that bounced from the daily eight, but now we're closing under that daily eight. So this is a fourth good sign for the market bulls for potential reversal. And then the fifth, let's take a look at this. This we as we know, gold is a leading indicator, a much more further out leading indicator. I don't know about much, but it is a. a leading leading indicator okay let's just call it that so leading leading and leading indicator of gold we saw a failed breakout on this upper trend line it can probably be redrawn from here but i like i still like it where it is you know um based on these two wicks so one two three four now the fifth rejection from this upper trend line and now we saw a break under that short term lower trend line where we saw one, two, three, four as well, four bounces on that lower trend line. So with this, this is now a fifth sign of early good sign for market reversal. Now let's take a look at one thing. Not everything is lining up. The reason why I still say not everything is lining up for market bottoming process, but I do have based on that five out of six, there are Generally, five leading indicators I look at DXY, US dollars, US 10 year. So that's second one, US dollar first, US 10 year, and then VIX, third one, gold is fourth one, and then last but not least is Bitcoin, crypto. So, with that being said, that last one is still not lining up. Not yet. Uh, we are seeing a bull break over that daily eight, but it's still not yet because this is still a daily bear flag. Still a daily bear flag. We are holding that key support resistance lining up with a one-to-one -one extension target. So with this, uh, we're going to need to see a, an actual bull break over two things. And there's going to be a strong resistance coming up too. So this money line lining up with this upper trend line, that is the key to break. Even, so depending on when we break it, there is another key zone right above it. So ultimately in the shorter term, as long as we break this upper trend line, I'll be a lot more comfortable. But as of right now, it is five out of the six leading indicators that I look at for me personally. That And not to mention the hourly four hour upper trend line break on the SPX that is very notable with a very, very nice follow through so far. So is this, to answer your question, to answer the question of the thumbnail, is this market bottom? Now, my answer would be, I'm leaning more towards yes. And let's take a look at another reason why I'm leaning more towards yes. Uh, we'll take a look at ETFs. Uh, we generally don't look at ETFs as, as uh, what do you call it? Market trend or whichever, but let's take a look at ETFs. Let's, let's do this for the first time. So ETF, you know, FNGU, this looks like a bottoming process and we are seeing nice reversal. We do need to see that Monday follow through. There is still an, a lot of upper trend lines to get through. So we are, of course, oversold, very nicely pulled back. And this is ideally the must hold key zone. So let's see if we get that follow through on Monday. Now, the other one that it's uh, very notable, a lot more notable is DXY. So, oh, sorry, SOXL. What the hell is DX? Oh, US dollars, <laughs> SOXL. So on SOXL, we have seen a pullback of 52% since January 13th with only two green candles. Well, now three, including today. But we have also seen a 55% pullback in 17 trading days. That is huge. Imagine something getting cut in half in 17 trading days. And this is a triple leverage bowl of semiconductors. It is not a small cap, minor cap, growth, whatever, you know, tiny cap, whatever you want to call it. This is not a tiny cap. So with that, with that being said, you know, where do you think this is going to go? Now let's take a look at that daily candle. That daily candle, that looks 
sure as hell looks like a hammer to me. Um, we did hold that support as well. The problem with this on SOXL is GP lining up with that key zone down below. So at most ideal entry is still at around $30. But where we are in the chart after a 55% pullback in 17 trading days, yeah, I'm pretty darn darn comfortable. Pretty darn comfortable going for a starter entry over here. You know, even if we're to just bounce for to that point 382, where we generally look for on the bounce. So if, if this is just a bounce, that bounce is going to bring us to 48.8, lining up with this previous resistance over here. So 48.8, you know, what is a risk to reward? So depending on where you enter today, if you enter on the close today, the risk is 20, 20, roughly 20%. The reward is roughly 25. So one to one, not bad. 0.5 upper trend line. Yeah, SOXL, that's another reversal signal hammer. Now the other one is YINN. This is a triple leverage ETF of China, China stocks. Again, hammer extended on the daily. Hammer reversal. This GP doesn't matter anymore. And is this double bottom? Uh, potentially, you could even call, maybe call it like a quad bottom. One, two, almost three, and then four. So right here, that's seven, seven, what is it, seven sixties? That is very key that we're holding that. Reversal hammer. Let's see if we get follow through on Monday. Airbnb, another one. There's going to be lots of hammers out there. Just to name a few. You know, there's uh, Ying, SOXL, Airbnb, BA. Actually, BA I really like. Uh, we'll discuss it a little bit later. So BA, Amazon, hell yeah. Tesla, almost a hammer. Microsoft, bullish as hell. So let's get into the tickers. That's it for the market deep dive. I hope you guys, you know, like what we discussed. But let's take a look at some tickers. The other reason why I think the bottoming process is finishing up. Now we're not going to discover, we're not going to discuss too much uh, tickers today. We're going to be discussing mainly focusing on the mega caps, which is what moves the market. So first of all, let's start. Oh wait, before we get into it, there is a couple of things that I also wanted to uh, cover. Good thing I made a note of it. First one, QQQ over I, uh, DIA. So this is uh, NAS over Dow Jones. This is what we're looking at before uh, on the forecast. We're looking at a break under this trend line, but look where we're bouncing from. We're bouncing right from that, right around. Remember, this is not going to be an exact chart. This is not going to be exact drawings like individual names because this is two names dividing each other. So with QQQ dividing over DIA, you know, this, I would still call this a bounce from that trend line. Again, depending on how you draw it, you know, you could say that this is actually exactly a touch. Uh, let's see. I draw it here. Yeah, that's a touch. But I don't like it there because then these two are under. So if we're here, yeah, close enough. Look at that. Yeah, so we're bouncing from there. QQQ over DIA. QQ, uh, NAS over Dow Jones. So with that, if we're seeing follow through on Monday, this pattern, this anticipation could be negated again this is a long-term pattern so what we could still see is a bounce on monday coming up to where is that previous maybe back test of this actual back test of this key zone before an actual break so this is going to be on the shorter time frame and then the bounce from this area again to maybe right here support resistance before actually coming back down so that would be a little bit more likely scenario versus this longer term. This is what I'm looking at QQQ over DIA. The shorter term wise, NAS, I do believe is going to be strongest. It's going to be leading the market. If NAS does not bounce, the market is not going to bounce. And that's what we're going to be looking at the mega caps only today. And the other one is... Was it this one? QQQ over I, IWM. So the anticipation on QQQ over IWM was that there is potentially going to be a bear break. But with rate hike potentials now, IWM is looking a lot more bearish over the longer term. So I do believe that we will see 188 again on this double top, previous double top. Let's take a look at the weekly. So previous double top, 191, 192. I do believe we're going to see that area again, potentially even breaking into new highs on QQQ over IWM. Keep your eyes on this. You know, if it's something that interests you, I do. This is just more so a, in relative terms, with 
indexes with each other. Okay. Uh, the other one, the last one, I did add a couple of these, you know, QQ, QQ over IWN was the only one we looked at before, but because of the rotation into Dow Jones, we have added a couple other ones to include DAOs. So DJ, uh, DIA over SPY, that's uh, Dow Jones over SPY. What we're looking at from here is another upper trend line touch. Let's see if we get that rejection. Today we have seen a slight rejection so far Monday. If we're to lose that daily eight, I would anticipate a little bit lower, to, lower prices come, meaning on the shorter term, SPX is going to be relatively stronger than Dow's because we, which makes sense, you know, if the bottoming process of the market after a, what is it, 20%? How, how big of a pullback was this? Uh, if bottoming process is completing on a 12% pullback of the market, then I would anticipate that people are going to be going a little bit more aggressive on, uh, in relative volatility wise. People will probably be looking at a little bit more of a rust bounds, NAS bounds, SPX versus DAOs. Okay, all right, so that's it for the market. Uh, first one we're gonna look at is Tesla. Always, always Tesla. That key break, that key, key break under this buy zone. This buy zone, we saw a little bit of the follow through, but we got to that GP, look where we bounced from. GP was 790, 76 to 813.05, and we bounced from 792.01. Now the loss of 800, it's a psychological support, and I really love this. It's the same as how we play the bounce of uh, thousand, sub thousand bounces, same with sub 950 bounces, sub 900 bounces, it's the same today. Today, sub, 800 bounces, whoo, man, I played that one wrong. So today, I hope somebody got into Tesla. I, I hope somebody played this. I got an entry right under 800. It was around 795, 790 something. And it was a daily 950, uh, di sorry, daily 850. 850? Can't remember. Anyways, daily 850 or something calls and it faked me out. So on here, when we look at this, I got, what? Oh, there we go, right here. So it got in somewhere on, on this candle, one of these two candles, and then it started bear flagging. Then it faked me out somewhere right here, and I went, uh, I went AFK. And from there, boom, this, that trade would have turned out to be a five, 600, Seven, seven hundred percent trade, seven hundred percent intraday trade within eighteen, eighteen times five. What's what, what is that? What's eighteen? Eighteen times five, five. Let's uh, let's do this instead. Seven. No, nope, that's not it. Where is it? Right over here. One and a half hour trade. One and a half hour would have been a 700% trade. Man, someone tell me, you tell me you got that trade. This was an amazing bounce play, uh, sub 800 bounce. So let's see if we get, well, I don't wanna see that opportunity again because we, we were looking for daily reversals. So this is a decent, decent candle. It's not exactly a reversal candle. Uh, you could maybe call it a spinning bottom candle, but let's see, we're gonna need to see that follow through on Tesla. I like the chart. I like the chart. This could also be read as an immediate backtest of, of that loss of uh, previous buy zone. Multiple supports in here and could be the backtest, meaning we could see lower prices come. We did see relative weakness in it on the earnings day yesterday. So that's something to note. Tesla, not something I'm looking at to play. Amazon is next. Sorry. Apple is next. We're going to go by market cap from here. Apple is next. Look at that reversal. Woo! Look at we, where we held from. Look at where we bounced from. We bounced from the GP. We back tested this previous all time high. Back tested again on the next day. And then we held on the closes. We never closed under this key trend line where we saw one, two, three, four, four over here. Uh, four rejections and an immediate back test. And now we're seeing a hold of that again. I really like Apple. It's really strong going into uh, coming out of the earnings. It's uh, definitely key for market reversal. And when we look at the uh, previous earnings, what, what has it been? Uh, Microsoft earnings is a nice gap up, immediate sell off. And then Tesla earnings was green, but also sell off. And what's the other one? T 
TSM before that was green and then sell off. Now we look at this. This is gap up and go. This Apple is gap up and go. So very key to know, Mark uh, Apple is the biggest waiting on NASDAQ. I believe it's also the biggest waiting on Dow. Might be wrong on that. Let me check this quickly. Apple, Apple. Whoa, it's not. It's only the 16th. Is that right? Yeah, Apple is only the 16th waiting on Dow. Huh, interesting. Regardless, Apple is the biggest waiting on Dow uh, uh, on NAS. So something to know if Apple is going to go up, I do believe it's going to pull the market up. So Apple is looking very nice for reversal from here. Is a one-to-one -one extension. Let's check the extension target just to be sure. So this is GP. One-to-one. -one. No, we got past that. Ah, there you go. 1.272. Ooh. <laughs> what an amazing hold. I think I saw 1.272 on some other chart as well, but I don't remember where now. So that's Apple. Next one is Microsoft. Look at that reversal candle. Look at that uh, upper trend line bull break. Earnings, bull break, came back down, gap fill, okay? Gap fill, look where we held. That previous resistance, resistance. This was a breakout fake out because next day gap down. And another resistance here, back tested, a little bit of a sideways action, and then boom, increasing bull volume. Let's see if we get that follow through going into Monday. I really like where we're closing. The problem with this, we are seeing closes on previous short-term resistances. So Microsoft looking decent as well. Now let's uh, speed through the rest of them. Amazon. I really like this reversal potential as well. This is a daily bear flag, but arguably, arguably, a lot of times, well, majority of the time, bear flags do play out. So the problem with this one is they might pin it as a bear flag all the way up until earnings February 3rd, which is next Thursday. Next Thursday, they might pin it there all the way until the earnings. But looking at this, you know, market, if market were to reverse, I would feel a lot more comfortable trading Amazon if it's trading above that 88. This is actually a very nice low risk en entry area from here though especially considering how the market could be reversing. Amazon is one of my favorites to play for options. You know, it's, uh, lately it hasn't really been, hasn't been favorite since, since, uh, since the retirement of whatever his name was. Um, anyways, so yeah, looking at this, like the chart as well, reversal potential. The next one, Facebook. I haven't, haven't actually taken a look at this chart. Ooh, look at where we're holding from Facebook. This makes, well, inverse and shoulders didn't pay up, play out. This makes complete sense to reverse from here, hey? Eh? So that, that potential inverse and shoulders that we were tracking before, it did not play out, it bear broke, and then we look what where it got to. That most ideal entry, GP lining up with that key zone. Previous resistances, makes sense we're gonna be bouncing from here. This is not exactly a reversal yet. No hammer, but it is, it is strong. It is a daily bear flag. Earnings is coming up uh, next week, next Wednesday. And based on this chart, you know, likely same scenario as uh, Amazon sideways action until until that earnings. So with that being said, now looking at a few of these bigger tickers, what I'm thinking from here is the potential reversal that was likely ca caused by Apple from here is going to be seeing follow through going into all these other mega cap earnings. Hope Facebook don't screw us over. Hope Amazon don't screw us over. What else is coming up? BA is already red. Activision is not mega cap. Uh, across my chart, there is also Ford, Unity, MRK. Yeah, I hope the these other mega caps don't screw up the uh, reversal potential. If Facebook and Amazon earnings are bad, the reversal might get screwed over and we will see potentially see lower side to come. All right, so next one is Google. Uh, no, that's good. Google. Bouncing from that key zone, wow. 
bouncing from that key zone. Now, what, one thing I really like about Microsoft and Google is when can you get prices like this? You know, don't don't look back and be like, oh, I should have bought at twenty five hundred on Google. Or I should have bought at what is it three hundred on Microsoft. Three hundred Microsoft's already potentially reversing. We're gonna need to see that once that follow through comes through. Yeah, you're not gonna see three hundred again. Maybe ever. So just keep that in mind. Um, with Google, whoo, GP reversal, already seeing new highs, already seeing new highs, breaking over Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all that. We're seeing new highs coming in. And we did close right on the resistance again, resistance support. Ooh, Monday is going to be key to watch. Today was a key break, but with the close, we're going to need to see that Monday follow through. Uh, NVIDIA. <laughs> Does this look similar or what? Remind, remind me of Apple. Look at this. Resistance, uh, broke over, support, immediate backtest. One, two, three, four. Four bounces, and now we're seeing another one over here. So there's not one-to-one -one anymore. Is it, does it line up with this? Woo yeah, does it remind you of Apple or what? Right. So same thing, almost a hammer. Stronger than the hammer. Reversal potential from here. Let's see if we get that follow-through on Monday. Uh, ADBE, Adobe. Adobe is already trading over 88. Wow. Adobe is already trading over 88. We saw strength on Monday already. It popped over, of course, market market chop, and then it chopped uh, everyone up. But now we're seeing a clear break over that 88 on Adobe. Earnings is already out. Gap down earnings. Another gap down over here. So is there, oh, last time we did bounce from GP2. So Adobe does hold, uh, does respect the fibs fairly well. Let's see where we are from that weekly fibs. I think I say platinum. No, it's not. Oh, so it looks like Adobe is actually a little bit weaker. It's bouncing from that 0.786, even though, well, on the pullback, is a lot stronger. Head and shoulders, huge follow through. Bouncing from the 0.786. Uh, problem with it now is, well, the good thing about it is now that the huge pullback, generally you would expect this, the bounce to be the stronger bounces. The bigger the pullback, the bigger the bounces. So with this Adobe, we could be looking at a very decent bounce from here. So let's say, so generally we only look at bounces. So we watch for reaction at the 0.382 first. Now if we're to bounce to the 0.382, it's not something that's on my top watch, Adobe. 8% uh, up versus 8% down. So it's one to one, not really uh, worth the risk. Did lose that money line. We could see a bounce to backtest the money line, which lines up with the GP. There's no immediate backtest. Okay, no back test of the money line yet. Adobe is actually very nice for a uh, potential longer play here. Longer entry. So that's it for what I wanted to cover on NAS. There are a few more tickers that I wanted to cover on Dow. Let's take a look at this one. MRK, it's been on top watch for quite some time. Look how strong this chart is. Head and shoulders, lack of follow through, coming back down to the money line, bouncing from that money line. Whew. And the bounce since has been, the bounce was 13, nope, 15% bounce. And I really like where it's uh, holding. On the weekly chart, look at that. It held that weekly eight. Very notable. This is still a weekly bull flag. We could see easily a break above that next resistance. MRK. It's strong. Now, if we were to draw a fib from down here, we did bounce from that point five. So this is a strong chart. MRK to keep on your top watch. It, it is a slow mover, but options should pay decently on MRK. On the break of this key zone, we should see nice follow through on this. There is a slight resistance right over here as well. 84.56, 8.456. MRK, I like it. Next one, AXP, earnings. So someone in the chat asked me about uh, MA MasterCard short, short or put today, I can't remember. Um, by looking at AXP, 
Mastercard, Visa. I think Visa had a very nice earnings. Uh, AXP had a very nice earnings. Gap up and go. And then next day, it was another gap up before now forming a daily potential. No, there's not exactly a daily both like uh, Visa, gap up and go. And uh, what's the other one? MA, MA, yeah. MA, whoa, gap up and go. Uh, it is at that uptrend line now. So for uh, Darren, you know, if, if that's something that, you know, you're still interested in, looking at this now, and I know I said that if you're looking for a short, I wouldn't short it. I think it was back down here or something. I now still wouldn't short it here. It, even though it is at the uptrend line of the rising wedge, because of that increasing bull volume, the huge gap up and a huge run, yeah, I do see higher prices come on MA. Uh, same idea with the, uh, across the whole credit card industry. Looking at the charts, you know, head and shoulders, lack of follow through. We did see decent follow through, but it did hold that money line. It got one, two, three bounces in, on that short on that short term. Three bounces alone on that short term alone. So with that, uh, huge bull volume came in, and we should see higher prices to come based on the chart on across it, across the credit card industry. HG. Now I was very surprised to learn that Home Depot is, well, of course I'm not that knowledgeable, but you know, surprised to learn that Home Depot is one of the mega caps on Dow. It's actually bigger than. Let's make sure of this. Three hundred eighty-two billion. What? Apple is 2.8 billion. So why is the weighting uh, of, uh, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, was, yeah, anyways, yeah, I was very surprised to learn that Home Depot was one of the biggest weightings on Dow. So looking at Home Depot now, uh, we saw a break to new highs, breaking over all week high. This is a new high of the week, okay? Very notable, bull volume coming in, GP bounce. Whoa, look at that most ideal entry, whoo. Weekly GP, yeah, this uh, from the low here to the high here. Weekly GP lining up that key zone. Look at that reaction. It's not earnings either. Jeez, gap down straight by up 6% move on that day. Home Depot, looking very nice for continuation. Now BA is on my top watch. Really like this. BA, triple bottom. The problem with the BA is remember, there's always fake breakout fake outs, right? That's why we drew this new upper trend line over here. So on this wedge, on this descending wedge, we're looking at how many breakout fake outs now. Breakdown fake outs as well. So first one, well, including even, even at the beginning of the chart. You know? So we'll call this number one, two breakout fake out, three, four breakout fake outs already. And now three breakdown fake outs. Is this going to the bottom? Earnings is already out of the way. And congrats again to whoever took a profit to up here. I think, I think there's a... Yeah, not gonna try to remember. Anyways, I look forward to seeing you on the on the uh, next morning live, eh? So with this, with this, now I'm looking at triple bottom. Now I'm looking at weekly bull divergence. Yeah, next week, and I need to see that follow through. But this is now potentially a weekly bull divergence. Chart looks great. Look at that weekly. So this is a strong support area. Right, multiple rejections. No actual backtest from back here. Hey, I've just noticed that. No actual backtest from here. Depending on how you draw it, you know, you could draw it up here, and you, you could call this a backtest. But I drew it down here just because of multiple wicks here, and very notably, these are wicking from the same area. So, with that being said, this is now an actual backtest. One, two, three backtests, triple bottom. Earnings out of the way. Yeah, I like it. Let's see, uh, actually I forgot to look at this chart today. So missed the entry, but we'll be looking at, if we get notable bull volume going into the market, follow through on Monday, this BA will be one of my entries that I'll be making. All right, so that's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoy the content. Make sure to give me a thumbs up and a, a like and a comment, please consider sharing our channel with your friends, family, if you think that's something that, they'll, that they will benefit from. Again, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.